you can see, I'm not exactly a world-class ping-pong player. I can just about manage to get the ball back across the net in a friendly exchange. But, supposing that I were asked to design a machine from parts that came in a paper sack, a machine that would perform a bizarre variation of ping-pong, where the table sags in the middle, where the object is to scoop up balls, not hit them, and where there's not just one ball, but hundreds. <laughs> kind of boggles the mind, doesn't it? <laughs> well, this little exercise also boggled the minds of an entire class of engineering students at MIT in the latest of their famous annual design contests. Go. Competition night. 200 students fighting to gather in the most ping pong balls in a series of matches lasting just 30 seconds each. The loser is eliminated, but the winner may end up as champion engineer. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are the engineer. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can demolish 40 beers. Drink rum, drink rum, drink rum all day and come along with us. Six weeks earlier, the students picked up their identical kits of parts. Robert Ambrogi, Benji to his friends, checks out the structural materials, while Megan Smith has ideas for the glue stick. I don't know, you could melt it on the other person's machine. <laughs> the task was revealed a few days ago, and already they're working out how the various gears, cardboard tubes, aluminum rods, and electric motors might be used. Two motors. Megan and her roommate, Jenny Quo, swap ideas. Hey, look. This would be great for a vacuum. Like you could, um, you could have a ball out there and just suck it up. I would say I, I'll most likely build a cart. But Benji went for the speed of an expanding arm rather than the maneuverability of a cart. One problem I'm going to have is aiming it so that it always hits that spike dead center. And I'm thinking of having something stationary. So I don't want to waste my motors or energy on something that'll roll around. Well, engineers are human too. <laughs> Jenny changed her mind and picked the cart approach. Oh. <laughs> now she'll have to learn to control it. I'm going to try to go for something that's simple, uses the energy that I have real directly. Its motion through there is going to pull these two bars downwards. So that once it's in that position, it Sounds simple, but of course she has to build it. You're working from materials and ideas, and you got to kind of make it all come together somewhere in the middle. The students in this course will never forget that the design is just the beginning. Then you have to make it work. It would be a welding rod, so we're going in a hole to here to a hole to there. It's got to be reliably built and finished on time. There's a couple of machines that are really super, but it's too late to change mine to theirs. <laughs> Sticks in the forward direction. You can't use it. You have to take it apart. Yeah. Awfully sorry. At the last minute, the instructors get some attention. They become extremely teachable at this time. <laughs> On the night, there are just two important questions. Will my machine work, and who am I up against? Jenny just found out that she's going against um, the guy, this one guy who's had, his name's Tashiki or something, I don't know, he's had this machine in a box. Like, one student asked him what he was gonna make, and he said, my, it's my 270 project, and that's all he said. Rumors of machines that can get rakes out in a tenth of a second. I've seen some really powerful machines, but, um, a lot of it has to do with the combinations of machines. A fast rate could get smashed very easily. Jenny Kuo versus Tashiki. Running the contest is the man who dreamed up this course, Professor Woody Flowers. Get set, go. Jenny gets away quickly, but Tashiki's heavy machine jams her up. She breaks free and regains enough control to collect her first and only load. That was enough to win. She's through to the next round. I didn't um, steer it as well as I thought I could have, but I still managed to get some balls and get some pounds. I was like that. You got aim right? Benji, round one. He 
he's lucky. Although his arm is moving slowly, his opponent misfires. But in future, you'll have to work fast to beat the maneuverable carts. Uh, it's moving slow. It's moving really bad. He wins, but he knows his machine is vulnerable. I don't know. It's moving slow. I think it might have been these, this wire. Yeah, see, this wire's tangled here. Megan Smith. Her cart's been simplified during development, and now it's a tough machine. It's an easy first round for her, too. A winner! <laughs> There's never a shortage of ingenuity. Anything is worth a try. Including this potential world beater. It's a barrier that blocks the opponent from even getting to the balls. That works, but the ball gatherers aren't quite as effective. Match results don't count toward your grade, but it still can be a serious business. Benji, round two. His brother, also an MIT student, acts as his second. And this one's tougher. He's up against a whirling cart. But Benji's big advantage is that a single successful stroke gets a heavy load. And that one's enough to win the round. Now Megan is up against a fast cart with a wild plunging rake. And she's in trouble. She loses control and there's a hopeless tangle. My wheel started just going too much this one way and, once, and then I just couldn't pull back. You, I guess I was just too that, nervous. Hey, no thanks, sorry. Jenny in round two. It's a flawless run. As the competition develops, the carts are looking better and better. Here's the death mobile streaking through the first two rounds. It was built by Brad Waller, a real artist on the joystick. Jenny meets the Deathmobile in round three. It's an even match, fast cart versus fast cart. And there's a control problem for Jenny. She can't work loose from the stakes that Woody Flowers put in just to make things a little more difficult. The perfectly controlled Deathmobile walks away with it. It was a good machine, it had potential, and I've worked on it for tons of, six weeks, seven weeks, and I'm really mad at myself because I can't steer. She got hung up on the post, and I didn't, so I won. And I just was Benji, through to round four, immediately has trouble spreading his rakes with the delicate winding system. The opposition makes it worse, and it's all over. I stuffed my rakes around back into my machine, and it all got tangled up. And once that happened, I was dead. It's no surprise when two carts make it to the finals. Brad Waller's Deathmobile against David Cultus's Love Tractor. Go down! Go down! The Love Tractor gets a good first scoop and then pins down the Deathmobile. It could be all over. 
But the joystick artist breaks out and begins to catch up. Fast. And the love tractor reveals a crucial flaw. If it jumps out of alignment, the non-steerable design is helpless. It's so close they need a ball count. It's Brad Waller. By 87 to 75, he is the champion engineer. The students were fantastic, as usual. A lot of diversity. They were exciting, and uh, I think they were good, good sports, and they learned a lot. We had lots of winners tonight. You learn so much about just how to design things. I mean, I know what a 632 screw is exactly now. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know everything. And you just sort of learn all that kind of stuff that's going to be awesome for when we're, when we're real engineers in the field. And we'll know, you know, what's going on. The class is valuable and the contest is for fun. Yeah, that's think, how you have to take it. I think it's probably the best class I've ever taken at MIT and I've learned so much from it. It's just, it makes me want to be an engineer now. <laughs>